Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topic is correlation versus causation. We're looking at methodology here, and so we have an obvious big question for today, which is what is the difference between correlation and causation? So when we say A is correlated with B, you need to not overthink this. It's very straightforward. All we're saying when A is correlated with B is that when A is present, B tends to be present as well, and when B is present, A tends to be present as well. Essentially, A and B go hand in hand. Now, this has been important for the unit so far because we've talked about how when we have two democracies present, peace tends to be present as well. But notice that we haven't said anything about causation. Correlation does not imply causation. Just because we know that when two democracies are present, peace tends to be present as well doesn't mean that democracy is actually causing the peace. There could be a whole bunch of other factors which still explain this correlation, the fact that we have democracy and peace going hand in hand, but don't actually have it in a way that democracy is actually causing the peace. So in this video, we're going to look at a whole bunch of different ways that we can see a correlation and still have no sort of causation in the direction that we thought that we might see it in. So for the moment and for the rest of this video, I want to assume that there actually is a causal relationship between two factors A and B. It can be the case that correlations just exist randomly. They can be statistical anomalies. So for example, when you flip a coin a bunch of times, if you were to look at 10 results and see eight heads and two tails, you might conclude that the coin is biased and it is going to come up as heads more frequently than it is a tails when in fact that you could just have a coin flip that is actually fair just randomly coming up with a lot of heads more frequently than tails. Now this is something that we don't have to really worry about too much when we're talking about the democratic piece because we have such a large study to look at we can be fairly sure that the relationship isn't, spur isn't spurious, that there's actually some sort of true relationship and a true correlation between democracy and peace. And we have statistical tests that we can conduct to ensure that there isn't any sort of randomness going on. And if there is a, an amount of randomness going on, the likelihood that it is random is very, very, very low. And we can actually know that and trust that the results are very unlikely to be purely random. But outside of this case where you have randomness, how can we still have a correlation between A and B without A causing B? Well, I'm going to give you four different explanations. First, it could be the case that you have the causal mechanism going the other way, where B is causing A. Or it could be that A and B are causing each other. It's not just that A is causing B, but also B is causing A. It could be that a third thing, C, is causing both A and B. And it could be, and this is the last one and the most complicated one, it could be that A is causing C and C is causing B, but a fourth thing, D, is causing C and C is causing B. And so the causal relationship is very complicated in that case. So I'm going to go through each of these four problems and give an example, and we're going to talk about the democratic piece at the end. All right, so first, let's talk about how B could cause A. Something that really frustrates me is when people talk about United Nations and the failure of United Nations troops to promote peace. So people might tell you that the presence of United Nations troops is correlated with the outbreak of civil war, and therefore we should not station United Nations troops in hotspots because they're so bad at stopping civil wars from happening. So this person is trying to appeal to the fact that United Nations troops might actually be bad at stopping conflict, like they are not helping the situation at all. And that's not what's happening here. What's causing United Nations troops to get involved in these places is the fact that these places are so prone to conflict. The United Nations troops are going to the hardest places to keep the peace, and so of course they're failing frequently. It's not easy to promote peace in the hardest places to promote peace, and that's where the United Nations troops are going. So this is where you see correlation between United Nations troops and breakdown of peace, but it's not that the United Nations troops are causing the breakdown of peace, it's the breakdown of peace that's causing the United Nations troops to show up. Second thing, it could be that A and B are causing each other. And sticking to political science examples, let's talk about wealth and democracy. Democracy is correlated with high domestic wealth, and therefore you might want to believe that democracy causes wealth. And that's true to an extent. There's a lot of good reason to believe that democracy should cause wealth. Democracy promotes rule of law and prevents predatory taxation from dragging down the economy, and those are good things that should promote wealth. And so democracy does cause wealth, but... 
On the other hand, wealth causes democracy. Why is that? Well, wealth gives the middle class political power, and when the middle class has political power, you kind of get democracy. So wealth is causing democracy. The relationship is going both ways. You have bidirectional causation here. And again, you're still seeing correlation between democracy and wealth. It's just that both things are causing each other now. All right, next one. It could be the case that a third thing, C, is causing both A and B. And there's a classic example of this in international relations. Perhaps at some point in your life, somebody told you that arms races cause war. That's mistaken. So it is true that arms races are correlated with the outbreak of war, but to say that arms races cause war just has it incorrect. What's actually causing conflict is bargaining problems. Remember back to the rationalist explanations for war unit when we talked about preventative war and information problems and that sort of thing? Those are the things that are causing war. And when states know that they're about to go into war, guess what? They engage in arms races to build weapons. So it's bargaining problems that are causing both the arms races and the war to occur and not the arms races actually directly causing the war. So to look at this visually, you could have someone claim to you that arms races are causing war when in fact you have this third element, bargaining problems that are causing both arms races and war to occur. And then the last one here is when you have A causes C, C causes B, but also D causes C, which causes B. All right. And the example here is going to be that time that your mom told you that you shouldn't go outside because it's cold and you might get sick. So cold weather and sickness are correlated. And this has led perhaps your mom or your grandmother to tell you that cold weather causes sickness. That's actually really poor medical advice. What's actually going on here is that cold weather is forcing people indoors and sharing cramped spaces allows germs to spread more easily. And so it's being indoors that's actually causing you to get sick. So the problem here visually is that people think that cold weather is implying sickness when in fact cold weather is implying people to stay indoors and being indoors is causing people to get sick. Now, the reason that it's bad to just look at it like this and ignore this third thing, this this factor in the middle, the intervening variable, is that if we're trying to make policy recommendations about how not to get sick, if you thought cold weather was actually stopping or was actually causing people to get sick, then perhaps you might say, well, you know, if we didn't have cold weather, we wouldn't have people getting sick. And the problem is that when you throw in this third factor of being indoors, then you also get the opposite problem where extreme heat causes people to be indoors, which causes people to get sick. So if you think that cold weather and sickness are causing the relationship or cold weather is causing sickness, then you might think that global warming will solve that problem. But of course, in the extreme, it's actually just going to make the problem worse, right? So that's why it's important to have this understanding that there might be something intervening in between and you still see cold weather being correlated with sickness but you don't have any straightforward causation here it's actually much more complicated now this is actually where it becomes important for when we're talking about the democratic peace theory when we're talking about the problems with correlation not implying causation we have people setting things up where we know that we have a correlation between democracy and peace and we have people claiming that democracy causes peace but that might not be the case that might just be an artifact fact of some other causal relationship. For example, democracy could cause capitalism and capitalism could cause peace. And again, there's a problem here. If you think that democracy is causing peace, then that would tell you that, hey, we should promote democracy around the world when perhaps other things cause capitalism. And if capitalism was what's causing the peace, then you know promoting both democracy and these other things would be really useful. And that's really what we're going to be looking at for the rest of this unit. However, in between now and when we talk about why capitalism causes peace, I'm going to talk about something very much related and I think a lot more fun, which is the McDonald's peace theory. Yes, McDonald's, like the restaurant. There's a peace theory about the restaurant McDonald's, and that's what we're going to be talking about in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I know you'll enjoy the next one. And until then, take care. Bye now.